One of the great things about coming to the management briefing seminars is that you get to see some of the leading edge technology that's coming into the automotive industry. Continental is working on autonomous technology. We're sitting in one of their development cars right now. Igor Mohadamovic is one of the lead engineers on developing this. And why don't you explain what Continental's vision is for using this technology? So at Continental, we have a very simple vision, vision zero. We want to avoid all accidents and all traffic related injuries and have no fatalities on our roads. So for this, we are investing heavily into our active safety technologies, emergency brake assistance, forward collision warnings, lane keeping, but also our latest technology which we call road departure protection. That is avoiding and preventing the car of leaving the roadway. So based on these fundamentals, we're building on and then developing even more safety technologies, which leads us into automated driving, which is exactly the car that we're sitting in here today. Okay, so let's run through some of the things that you've added to this Chrysler 300, yep. starting with this big screen. Why this display? So the big screen is simply just for our developers when they are driving and sitting in here, they can quickly see what is in front of them, what do the sensors see. So for example, we have a stereo camera mounted on top of the windshield looking forward. So we added a camera image in the top right corner here. It tells them, it visualizes to them what the camera actually sees. And then on our left side, they can see how our fusion works. So real time, they know what the car is doing instead of having to go through a bunch of data later on. Exactly. Okay, now let's talk about these cameras that you've put on each side of the instrument cluster to look at the driver. Why are you looking at the driver? Yes, so in this vehicle, we have two driver analyzer cameras. In series production, we'll reduce that to one. But right now, we are working on building up a driver model. We need to know what the driver is doing at all times to be able to measure his attentiveness, but then also his intention level. We need to know what the attentiveness level is before we can give the driver the control back of the car. For example, if you are looking forward, you may actually just be staring into nothing and not focusing any into it anything all right and we also need to know what the intention of the driver is if we notice the driver giving brief glimpses over his shoulder we may be able to associate that with an upcoming lane change or if he's glimpsing at his navigation screen he may be wanting to set a new radio station or change the heat control as well so we're able to track these eye movements and these head movements with these cameras and we want to build a, a complete driver model we it's very a fundamental thing for automated driving. I, I, I love this, how car companies and suppliers have to go and study drivers to find out what they want to do. Yeah. And then let, let's talk about this light bar on the leading edge of the instrument panel here right. that gives feedback to the driver as to what the car is doing. Why don't you run us through what these colors mean? So we installed a light strip in the front of the vehicle. This is a reduced concept that we had a couple years ago from the driver focus concept, which it had a light screen all around the vehicle, in the door panels, front and back, and also one in the rear. It was 360 degrees uh, of LEDs. In this vehicle, we're focusing only on the front, and the reason why we have it there is we want the driver to always be aware of in which mode the vehicle currently is. If it's in an active safety mode, if it has only adaptive cruise control on, or if it's really in a fully automated mode. So, when it's white, when the color of the LED strip is white, then the driver is 100% in control. That means the car is in manual mode. When it turns green, it can be associated with adaptive cruise control. So that means the driver can take his foot back and relax and the car will manage the distance, keep a safe distance to the vehicles in front of us. Then we have the blue mode, which means it's an automated mode. At that point, the driver can now move his hands off the steering wheel as well. And then we have two additional modes. One is the orange mode. It indicates a standby for the lateral control. That means the driver has grabbed the steering wheel, is making a lane change, has given a turn signal. This way he's indicating to the car that, hey, I will now take control and I will execute a maneuver. And the final mode, final color, is a red flashing LED strip. This indicates there is a warning that something is happening in front of us and we need the driver's attention immediately to the front. Ira, I think this is so fascinating to learn how you're learning what people do 
letting them know what the car is doing. I, I love seeing that you keep making progress in this autonomous technology. And progress is key. We started a couple of years ago with our first generation vehicle. We have taken it out to Nevada. There was big news a couple of years ago in 2011 and 12. And we were the first supplier to receive the Nevada automated driving testing license. And that was big for us. To get that testing license, you needed to get over 10,000 miles in a fully automated mode, which we did. But that wasn't it. We've taken our car from Auburn Hills down to Uvalde, Texas, another cross-country tour. We've taken it to West Virginia as well, another cross-country tour. And we also driven from Las Vegas through Colorado, through the Midwest, all the way to our test facility in Brimley, Michigan. That was a long drive and it was amazing. We learned so much. And the key is we really progressed by learning. We learned a lot about how an automated driving system works. This is where the requirement came from us. Hey, we need a driver model. We need a very straightforward HMI, human machine interface. And we also learned that the vehicle needs to be able to drive safely, even if there's a failure, until at least the driver is ready to take over control. So for this, this vehicle right here, this Chrysler 300 looks as generic as they can be, minus our monitor here, but the real technology, the real safety concept is under the hood. We have a complete redundant architecture. Our sensing, our actuation is completely redundant. Our communication lines, our power lines are redundant. So the key for us is to always have a safe mode until the driver is back in case something happens. Well, Ibril, thanks so much for the update. Very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Auto Line on the Road is brought to you by the American Chemistry Council Plastics Division Automotive Roadmap. Available now for free download 